So, so that's a statement of uncertainty principle. But the way you hear it, it's like, you know, it's like me telling you Martians have landed in San Francisco. Like, why? Why are there Martians in San Francisco? Um, there's no intuitive reason why this should be true. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be. There is actually intuitive reason why this has to be true. And all this ties into De Broglie relationship. That's why I told you guys from the beginning that the De Broglie relationship, that every, anything that has momentum has a wavelength that it can be related to. H over lambda. This is your gateway between classical world, momentum, and the quantum mechanical world, wavelength. So let me try to um, illustrate, uh, demonstrate a particle, demonstrate something that has as precise a momentum as possible. So that means it has a, as precise a wavelength as possible, right? And the functions that have um, that have precise, well-defined wavelength are the sinusoidal functions, right? Or complex exponential. For my so my uh, wave function, let me just uh, take a snapshot. So at t equals zero, uh, might look something like some amplitude times e to the um, I, um, uh, I guess let me write out in terms of lambda, so the I 2 pi x over lambda, right? Let me sketch the real part of this. So um, on this axis with x, um, so let's say at, if I'm doing the real part, it's actually cosine, so at x equals zero, I would be starting from one or a, and as I go, farther out, it looks like cosine. All right. Can I ever stop? Or does this have to go forever? Why? Yeah, forever. If I ever stop, then that's not my wave function. If I ever stop, then I, that means, you know, it's uh, x uh, less than some value x max. And it's the same deal on the other side. If I ever stop on the other side, then it's, uh, you know, if I ever stop, then it's for x greater than some x min. But so if I'm somehow putting this restriction on this function, then it's no longer this complex exponential. It's the complex exponential limited to this. And the outside of that range, it'll be zero, zero for below the minimum and above the maximum. So the function that has a precisely defined wavelength is not this. You cannot limit it to spatial distribution. You have to let it roam freely to from negative infinity to positive infinity. So, so this is what you have. Um, so, you know, if it's, so I, you know, because of spatial limitations, I stopped, but it's supposed to go on forever. So if someone were to ask you, uh, where is this particle? Where is it? it it's uh, everywhere. That's what I was telling you about the plane wave solution last time. Plane wave solution represents a particle that's everywhere. <laughs> so, um, so this is what you have here. In this particular somewhat absurd picture that you wouldn't really see in real experiment, you have uncertainty in momentum go to zero because the uncertainty in wavelength was zero. And you have uncertainty in position as a result of the kind of the fact that this wave function is all over the entire space. The uncertainty in position also has to go to infinity. So well, I guess let me ask you this question. Is this? consistent with this. Kind of, right? Um, in, in a kind of vacuous sense, you know, it's uh, infinity times zero, you can make the number whatever you want it to be. <laughs> maybe it's greater than h bar over two, maybe it's smaller, you wouldn't know. But at least this is giving you that um, in a very naive picture where you said, oh, I don't need to have any uncertainty in momentum because I can define a function that has precisely one wavelength, then you are saying, oh, that's not quite right. 
it does have, um, uh, if it has a zero uncertainty momentum, that leads to arbitrarily large uncertainty position. So let me give you a more realistic picture. A real, more realistic picture might be something like this. So, all right, let's say I'm going to give up on my dream of having um, the arbitrarily precise uh, momentum measurement. So I'm going to say, all right, take this function and then multiply it by, oh, I guess I can do it with the different things, but I kind of want to multiply with this, with a, a, a normal function. So that, uh, let's say I multiply it with e to the minus x squared over two sigma squared. Then what that does is it lets me localize this particle. So let me shift to my x equals zero over so that I can actually draw both sides reasonably well. So this is my x equals zero. Oops, um, x equals zero. And let me just draw the envelope so that I know what I'm fitting where. My envelope represented by this might look something like this. So maximum here and something like this. Maybe this is my envelope. And I'm going to change my wavelength so that I can Oh, sorry, this is a terrible normal distribution. Uh, something like this. And I'm going to increase or uh, increase my momentum or decrease my wavelength so that I can fit in something that looks kind of wavy. So what my wave function will now look like, that's represented by this, will be something like this. So it's this sinusoidal oscillation multiplied by the normal function envelope. So it would look something like, um, so starting from here, um, as it goes here, it'll oscillate, go all the way negative. So there will be a kind of mirror version of this normal thing on the bottom. And this will kind of fit in, oscillate in between these two until it goes to zero. So this is what this new wave function will look like. If I insist on making sure that my position uncertainty is an infinite, because if you don't already hate infinity, you should hate infinity. Infinities are nasty. You don't really want to see them in your description of anything. Um, that's why, you know, there's a reason astronomers say visible universe. Because, yeah, visible universe is not infinite, but the actual universe might be infinite. Um, so, so this is, a, this is a somewhat nicely behaved wave function, which has limited spatial extent. So if someone asks you, what is the uncertainty in delta x? I can actually tell you what it is. My uncertain, so this is a sigma. This is my sigma. And I can say my uncertainty in delta x, uncertainty in position is a sigma. Or that's actually how I defined uncertainty. Yeah. And I might be missing factors of two here, by the way. So um, don't push me too much here. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll be hand wavy there. <laughs> um, so you have a situation set up where the uncertainty in position is um, reasonably limited. It's not zero because you can kind of imagine how um, ugly this will begin to look if you're trying to squeeze this down to zero. So we are not greedy. We are just setting it at some nice finite value. And this would be the question. Can we now say that the uncertainty in momentum, can we still say that uncertainty in momentum is zero? I mean, after all, you have one wavelength here. So this is where, uh, so in your lab, we will address this uh, under something called the Fourier analysis. The idea is that this uh, wave packet can be represented as a superposition of a bunch of these. And the way you would build up this wave packet is by, so there is, um, so you know, if you're trying to say this is your wavelength, then what you're trying to say is this. You are trying to say, all right, I'm starting from here, go to here, and you are trying to say this is your wavelength. And well, so your wave packet does have a component to wave that has that wavelength, but that component, it looks like this. 
it, it, its magnitude doesn't vary. It has a constant amplitude that, you know, that doesn't change. That'll just uh, oscillate up and down. So in order to build this wave packet, what you need to do is you need to bring in additional um, uh, other waves that, that have different wavelength. So, um, so, so let me, I guess I'm kind of running out of time. So let me just call this, um, um, so let me put it this way. Under something called Fourier analysis, an aspect of which you will see in the, one of the simulations that you're doing in the lab, um, this, meaning this, is a superposition, meaning sum of many different wavelengths. And you will see this uh, more intuitively in the lab. Um, as you are changing the parameters in the simulation, you will see that if you are trying to make the position uncertainty smaller, that makes the, the uncertainty in the uh, wavelength, or your lab actually deals with the wave number, uncertainty in the wave number greater, that leads to greater uncertainty in the momentum. And so notice how, so far I haven't brought in really anything quantum mechanical. I'm just describing waves, right? So there is a classical wave number position uncertainty. If you have a classical wave and you want to confine it within some region, then there will be an uncertainty in the wavelength or wave number because you have to combine many different wavelengths to get that uh, localization of the wave. The quantum mechanical piece is this, that when you have that uncertainty in the wavelength, that translates to the uncertainty in momentum. Yeah. So, um, so if this makes sense, then this uncertainty principle is not really new. If you're good enough in math, then this is something you could drive mathematically from a wave number position uncertainty principle in classical waves.